my name is Rob Ray from MP3 Car. About a year ago, I did a video on how to build your own car computer. And it's important to do this next step, which is laying everything out on the table and doing some project planning. It might look like a big mess here, but this is actually one of the most important steps. It saves you lots of time, lots of money. If you plan things ahead of time, you can make life a whole lot easier on yourself. So let me go through a couple of things that I have here. On the left here, we have some USB extension cables. Pretty small thing, but if you wait to the last minute to buy these from Best Buy, you're going to be sorry. So order these online first. Um, the computer, which I'm going to talk about here in a second, we're going to do 5.1 channel surround sound on it. So we have a bunch of 3.5 millimeter to RCA output cables right here that are going to take the 3.5 millimeter female jack on the back of this computer and then output it to the proper amps. We have a monitor extension cable in case we need it. Um, again, this is where project planning is important. Think about where you're going to put your screen, where you're going to put your computer, how many cables, how much, how many feet of cable you're going to need. Um, do you have lots and lots of stuff in your car? How much shielding do you want around your cables? <clears throat> Next item we have here on the table. This is a, a relatively new product, but it's going to make your installation a lot easier. I'm not going to spend too much time on this because we've already done a video in the past but it is an intelligent 12 volt powered or 20 volt, 24 volt powered USB hub. Each port circuit breaker protected and it will solve a lot of USB nightmares. Well, watch our other video on that. Another interesting thing that we've had in the store for a little while, we borrowed this from the marine industry. This is a little USB port and the theory behind this is that you take out an extra cigarette lighter in your dashboard and you put this guy in and you instantly have a USB port which runs through this cable. You could put an extension on this VD2 and plugs into your computer. So plug your flash drive in here, your hard drive. Uh, if you ever need to plug in your cell phone for charging, great little way to do that. So let's move over to the back of the computer and the computer itself. So this is one of our power bundles. It's based off of an Intel Mini ITX motherboard. There's a M2 ATX HV power supply in here which will run on an either 12 volt system or a 24 volt system like if you have a, a boat or a bus. This runs on that. Um, we have a customized quick release kit which we've developed to make it really easy to take in and out of your vehicle if you need to replace it or bring it in and put it on the bench. This is a quick release cable kit. Um, and what this does is it permanently gets installed in the vehicle and it takes the unregulated 12 volts in and ignition in through here. and it also outputs a regulated 12 volts to, to use to power devices like your monitor. If the monitors, if you don't give them regulated voltage, they die very quickly and they get funny lines and your touchscreen gets uncalibrated. So do yourself another big favor. Even if you don't use this harness, find a way to give your monitor regulated 12 volt power. Just to demo this, we have our wireless adapter and our Bluetooth adapter plugged into the back of the motherboard here. When you actually go to install this in your car, think about where you're going to be using these devices and mount them accordingly in your car. If you're going to be using a Bluetooth keyboard in the front seat all the time or a hands-free device, put this somewhere very close to where you'll be using it and you'll save on noise and other interference issues. Same with the Wi-Fi adapter. Put it, if you always park your car in your garage and nose in near your access point, Put this on the right hand side of the car or near your access point or somewhere where it's not going to be blocked by a big chunk of metal in your car and use some of these USB extension cables to do that. The other thing that you can do to make it so that these devices don't fall off the end of your cable is use a little bit of electrical tape to, to bind the two together or if you have shrink tubing that makes it for a nice cleaner looking install too. Other things we have on the table. This is a relatively new monitor from Lilliput which has a backup reverse wire built into it. So the theory with that is, is that when you put your car in reverse, automatically switches to the reverse camera. And even if your computer is rebooting or just starting up, you still can have access to your reverse camera while you're pulling out of the driveway. Uh, so that's an interesting thing to look at. And just to look at power consumption of this unit, this is a dual core Intel processor. Um, and just sitting here at idle with the monitor, we're using 4.3 amps at 12 volts. So I have this hooked up in line just so we can take a look at the power. Um, another thing that's, that you should think about getting that will make planning your install easier is a little 
power brick to put on the table. So we, we have a 5 amp brick sitting here on the table uh, that's powering this whole system. As you can see, we're getting really close to hitting the 5 amps. So while we're here on the bench, consider using the bench power supply for the lily put just to offload that off the power supply because we're getting ready to max out our 5 amp brick. And anything, any power supply more than 5 amps starts to get in the expensive range. So uh, you can either use a battery from your car or kind of disperse some of these devices to a couple different power supplies to lower your cost when you're just planning and troubleshooting stuff on the bench. So at this point, everything's ready to go. Uh, you take the operating system of your, ins your choice, you install it, and uh, your navigation stuff, and you're ready to go. The other thing about this motherboard, this is on a power bundle. I already mentioned the five audio ports, but we've got lots of USB ports in the back here. And the other thing to mention, there's an HDMI, a DVI, and a VGA connector. So we've got VGA coming out here, DVI coming out here, and then there's also an HDMI port here in the bottom. So very powerful motherboard, lots of inputs and outputs, and there's also a, a reset switch on the back here that you can use if, you, if your computer stops responding. If you wanted to make a super advanced install, you could even take the switch out and connect your own little wire into a rocker switch up on the dashboard. So if you ever just wanted to reset your computer while you were driving along, you could use this switch, just extend it up to your dashboard and install that. So thanks a lot for watching our blog and good luck with your install.